A tall, handsome young man stood in front of the mirror in the bathroom. In life, he knew what he looked like, what kind of hair he had. But in the reflection on one side there was him, but on the other there was a completely different guy with black hair. Both were confused, not understanding how this happened. The blonde's name is Darren, and the brunette's name is Max. The first one looked at his characteristics. He was the heir of a great clan with a demon hunter class. Later, he decided to leave the reflection alone and went to make himself some tea. The young man thought about the past and compared all the facts, his inner self. Max realized that he had become the character he had created 12 years ago in his second year of high school. He recalled drawing Darren and coming up with all sorts of characteristics for him as a child. He would be obsessed with the idea of creating another noble version of himself. Then, the guy was under the influence of the 8th grade syndrome. He was too impressed by a game called History of the Continent of Arcana, one of the best virtual reality games about another world. It did not lose popularity until its closure, which made it a legendary game. But on the day of the closure, along with the news of the disappearance of the CEO of the company Cosmo, Arcana became a part of reality. Monsters began to appear from rifts all over the world, and the existence of humanity was under threat. But along with the monsters came people who were in sync with their characters. They were called players, and they could use skills to defeat monsters and save the world. There were times when Max wanted to become one of them, but even then he realized that even with the awakening of the Force he would not be as popular. The price of one virtual reality machine is tens of millions of one. Even a month's rent would cost hundreds of thousands. His father's business failed, and he blamed himself for being a bad father and not being able to provide his son with even computer games. His sister tried to calm him down, but his mother said it was all her fault. Then the young man realized the cruelty of the world around him. He had no choice but to throw the lasso. If he knew that this would happen, he would never have quit. Having lost for less than a year, his characteristics and level were very low. He was finally able to awaken, but into a damn character that a crazy schoolboy made. The character's name was Darren, and the guy played it with all seriousness. The backstory is this. The young man was the heir to a great family, but all the relatives fell victim to the demon, so only he remained. Darren decided to become a demon hunter to get revenge, a very creepy character, whom Max seriously considered his second personality. It was funny in his second year of high school, but now it's an endless source of shame for him. On top of that, this hero speaks very strangely, like an aristocrat, which Max doesn't like at all. The guy was worried about his appearance and manner of speech because of which he could not calmly appear in society and become its full-fledged member. He imagined his boss at work scolding him for his appearance. And knowing Darren's manners and character, he will not tolerate this and will definitely do something terrible. He couldn't go to work because he could be sued for indecent acts. Max's thoughts were transformed into Darren's words in a completely different way. He said that nobles do not bow their heads to everyone. Brunette was concerned about whether all players felt the same when synchronizing, although most said that the changes were minimal. He understood that if he couldn't go to work, he would have to become a player. But more than 10 years had passed, and he remembered almost nothing about Arcana. He decided to search for information first because he lacked even basic knowledge of the player. Rankers who close high-level rifts earn hundreds of millions, but this information is of little use because difficulty is directly related to risk. The main thing now is to figure out what the demon hunters usually do, but the site only had two pages and no useful news at all. Suddenly the hero stumbles upon terrible news. It said that all the NPC demon hunters in Akshan City had been killed. The only city and sacred land of the demon hunters was destroyed. Max realized that there was so little information, not because they were doing nothing, but because the class had completely disappeared. Although no one chose them 10 years ago, low characteristics, strange pumping, and disgusting skills. This class has a hard time leveling up by hunting monsters, so it had to be leveled up through quests. The only thing they were incomparably better at than other classes was fighting demons, but they only appeared in demon hunting quests. Most of them were just grinding. The role of the hunter was unclear. But being bankrupt and not being able to change jobs are two different things. Now there's no one to even teach skills, since everyone has been killed. However, one piece of news caught the guy's eye. It said that the update introduced demons that only hunters could best deal with. Now there are demons among the monsters. Player losses have increased greatly due to debuffs, possession, destruction of the mind, problems even for rankers with level 200. It turns out that demons appeared in reality, and since the hunters did not deal with them, this means that after the destruction of Akshan, the young man became the last demon hunter. He was wondering whether he should return after a 10-year hiatus. There is no guarantee that the demons he remembers will appear, 
A lot could have changed during this time. If even high-level players can't handle it, then Max even more so. Little Max reminded that the great Darren does not run away from pathetic demons. No temptations and trials will touch his great pride. Darren knew that these were useless thoughts and there was no reason to worry. Meanwhile, the news was reporting on the dire consequences of the demon update. The blonde said out loud that he would personally send each of them to hell. Several years have passed since the Great Cataclysm. Many things were lost, but people were able to get back on their feet. The streets are alive again and everyone has adapted to the new world, but there is always darkness next to the light. The negative emotions of people who have gathered together again have become excellent food for demons. One ordinary day, a young man named Greg, the leader of the group, was standing on the street, waiting for the last member along with the others. Just a few moments later, Darren joined them. The friendly leader introduced the new team member to everyone and greeted the cold blonde himself. The young man, whose attention had been drawn to the rift, now understood how the players saw him. Normal people cannot interact with the rift in any way. Darren was level 55, which was perfectly within the recommended 3540 for completing the game. When he searched for information, he learned that the average level of rift attackers was 200, so it would take a lot of work to reach such heights. Luckily, not everyone awakens as a high-level player, so he was able to find a suitable group. The participants appeared before him. The quiet brunette, Bob, the cute sorceress, Catherine, and the melee attacker, Kevin. The group leader announced that after five minutes of a little preparation, they would enter, because judging by the destruction, the other group was already inside. The destruction rate was 19.8%. When it reaches 100%, monsters break through the rift into the real world, and players can freely enter and protect them. Only they can stop this time bomb. Max wanted to say something encouraging, but Darren said that with him, the guys don't have to worry about anything and was cruelly ignored. The participants chatted about the battle and paid no attention to him. Meanwhile, the players entered the Knoll's underground storage facility, the food warehouse. Catherine was surprised that there weren't any monsters around, but Greg reassured her that another group had passed through before them, so they just needed to take a slightly different route. Darren sensed that something was wrong, so he walked behind. The commander saw the gnolls appearing unexpectedly and ordered to prepare for battle. The blonde analyzed a very common combination of group members and realized that the tank, Bob does not protect the group, but attracts even more monsters. The attacking tank had to go completely into defense, and the mage deals the main damage. Being useless, the player decided to check the inventory, which did not contain any good weapons, so it was better for him not to get involved in the fight. However, suddenly an enemy arrow flew at Darren from the side. It turned out that there was an ambush behind the pillars, which instantly attacked the team. An even more fierce battle began, and the group was barely able to cope. It was at this moment that Greg, the leader, decided to leave the fight and disappeared. Kevin, seeing this, became distracted by him and began to angrily shout at him to come back. Suddenly, the guy is attacked by a monster and the blade approaches his eye. But Darren shoots his bow in time, saving his comrade's life. Bob fought desperately with a bunch of creatures, but he was unable to stop them all. Catherine panicked, but a blonde man came up to her and told her to calm down, because he would deal with the breakthrough, and she would need to use a strong spell. After some time, the girl was ready to attack and warned the team. Fiery arrows began to fly out and pierce everything in their path. This attack helped to defeat the enemies and the guys began to slowly look around. Furious, Kevin ran up to the leader to take out all his anger on him, because he abandoned them at a crucial moment. He began to insult him, saying that without his popular brother he was worth nothing. Darren approached him to cool his fire. A terrifying grin appeared on the commander's face and he began to laugh at the players. The blonde saw that there was a demon hiding behind Greg, then he realized that he was possessed. Suddenly Bob finds himself in a scary, dark space, and he sees his team being strangled by demonic shadows. Greg cast a fear effect on everyone using the demon's gaze, but brave Darren ran towards him without a shadow of doubt on his face. The demon stopped his attack by saying that Greg could die if he was going to hurt the demon. But Darren was not deterred and raised the dagger above him. And at the same moment he struck Greg's armor but it only cracked. The demon inside the boy went wild and turned to face his opponent. And there was already a blade at his eye. With one movement of his hand the young man cut his face. The demon couldn't believe his loss. And the blonde shut his prey up in a cold tone. Memories of his conversation with his brother began to surface in Greg's mind. How he asked to avoid dangerous rifts and invited me to join his guild as an analyst. The guy simply didn't want to be a loser because even on the streets people started talking to him only because of his brother, to congratulate him or to pass on something. Constant ridicule towards him, 
because he was the older brother, but had less popularity, abilities, and status. He just wanted to be someone his brother could be proud of, and that's when the demon decided to help him. In a moment of despair, a demon entered his consciousness and bound him. His body was taken under control, and he only watched from the side what was happening to his team. And at the moment when Greg's body was wounded by Darren, his soul was freed from the clutches of the demon. However, the demon was not going to give up and continued to reproach the guy for the fact that he would now kill his comrade. But it was too late. Greg himself held his body for the final attack to kill the demon. The unwavering youth made the decisive blow and looked at the demon defeated in the body of his comrade. After a while, the leader woke up surrounded by his team. Everyone started asking about his health and worrying about him. Greg didn't understand how he survived, but a calm Darren told him that he told him not to worry. Unfortunately, when checking his inventory, the blonde didn't find anything new, so the demon turned out to be useless. The next day, Greg showed his friend's post to his brother, which talked about their raid yesterday. In the comments, no one believed the tales that someone was able to defeat the demon. The brother did not express due confidence in this information. Then the guy said that he was the one who was possessed. After this sentence, the head of the Gaon Guild, a rank 11 player with a level of 368, Adrian, spilled the entire contents of the cup onto the table. During the conversation, it turned out that Greg was now ready to become an analyst in the guild and also wanted to accept that hunter into it. It turned out that he realized his limits and realized that this was a more suitable role for him. Adrian was amazed by the capabilities of the hunter, who, in addition to destroying the demon, had a high level of mental resistance, especially since he used a dagger, not magic. He believed his brother, but he didn't understand why that guy would go into a low-level rift with such abilities. After these words, he handed over the contract with words of gratitude to his brother and now Gan's analyst. When he saw the contract terms for the demon hunter, he broke out in a cold sweat. Meanwhile, at Max's house, Darren saw that his level had increased. Max was thrilled with the 12-point increase thanks to the demon, but for Darren it was a small thing. Coming out of the shower, Max was already thinking about rest, but he was interrupted by a blonde man who saw the mess. At that very moment he changed his clothes and began to actively clean up. After cleaning, he made a delicious soup, and then he immediately started cleaning the kitchen and washing the dishes. At this time, Max remembered that in addition to levels and characteristics, the character settings that he set are also applied. And if we talk about talents, then we can start with magic. Because after just one demonstration, Darren can repeat any spell, he is smart, and he also has good physical potential. They were interrupted by an unexpected message from Greg. The long message spoke of an invitation to the guild. But Darren decided not to look into it and simply decline, since he didn't even have time to read it. The young man decided to start by testing his talent for magic and began looking for various videos. When the brothers saw Darren's response to their brilliant proposal, they were quite stunned. Adrian was very angry because he did not understand why he refused the offer of the best guild in Korea, which offered him a car, payment for any whims, and a share of 9.5 to 0.5. Greg suggested that they might have been beaten to it by one of the foreign guilds, the best of which were gathered in Seoul. The head of the guild did not wait and said that he himself would go looking for him to talk to him. Greg tried to describe what he looked like, but could only explain that Darren looked like a quirky aristocrat. Meanwhile, the blonde was actively studying magic and taking notes on the knowledge he gained. He understood all the fundamental principles of magic, so he believed that any spell could be cast if he had enough mana. Max was delighted. He didn't expect anything else from his character. The test was completed. Now they could distribute the points. Two points each for strength and dexterity, seven for mana, since it's too low. The brunette suddenly remembered the backstory of his character and decided to add one last point to his luck. It seems like he only raised his luck from one to two, but in fact he doubled it. The next morning, a notification came about a class quest. After the appearance of Arcana in reality, quests began to appear very rarely. And the reason is that there are too many NPCs who can give them out. Even a regular quest is a great rarity. And here it is immediately a class quest, but a first rank paladin has already received it. A class quest is given to only one person from the entire class. If you look at it sensibly, there is no chance that a class quest will be given to a player with level 67, but there are no demon hunters left except Darren. Akshan is the base of all demon hunters. It sounds cool, but in reality it can shock you with its appearance. Their quests are a repetition of useless work. And the living conditions and quests for players leave much to be desired. NPCs constantly yell at you, which complicates the situation. Demons penetrate the human mind, so training is needed to make it stronger. However, this is now in the past, 
First, Darren decided to see what the point of the quest was. At this time, in the anti-Arcana United building, Korean branch, to deal with the chaos and damage that resulted from the appearance of Arcana in reality, an association of former developers of the game was formed. It reacts to every update that is reflected in the real world, collecting and analyzing information for players. Some of the workers at this company were discussing whether an update would be released this week. Suddenly, their boring conversation was interrupted by an unexpected update. The entire office was in an uproar. Someone wanted to quit in a panic. Everyone was told to immediately turn off their phones, otherwise journalists would start calling. Everyone was stunned by the new update. A new demon has emerged from a new rift, the fortress, the territory, and the outskirts of the Count's family's territory, and also new monsters above level 230, Bloody Bandit, Count Joshua's soldier, his knight and servant, and others. And the most terrible thing is the new named Monster Count Joshua, level 430. The staff was indignant, because even the strongest player was at level 403. Reporters and journalists wrote messages in an endless stream. Colleagues thought that this was simply an impossible task, and that humanity was simply being asked to die. If the previous updates were still manageable, then this destroys the balance. Meanwhile, an exhausted Max suffered from the tireless Darren, who had completed almost all of the tasks of today's quest to strengthen the body. His whole body was shaking. The brunette did not understand how he could put so much strain on his body at once. The calm blonde was eating a sandwich while in the corner, and exhausted Max was trying to bring himself back to life. But thanks to such efforts and Darren's pride, they were able to complete all the tasks. Now the blonde could sleep peacefully with peace of mind. The next day, he went to the sports ground again to complete assignments. The quest was repeated again, so Max had a hard time again. A whole week passed and the quests were repeated again and again. Thanks to their persistence and efforts, they completed their weekly goal and received a plus two to strength and a plus two to agility. Stat boosting items are insanely expensive and he got four points without even leveling up. If this is a repeating quest that will keep popping up, then the reward justifies these terrible conditions. Suddenly, Darren heard news about the Arcana update from a nearby radio. In the evening, he watched the news, which told about a new rift, Count Family Territory, as well as a new monster, Count Joshua. They said that he is a demon and a vampire. His level is 430, which is the highest level of a monster at the moment. Everywhere they talk only about this news, and most guilds express their reluctance to take part in the future raid, it is associated with huge risks. Demons are the hardest for players to deal with. No matter how strong you become, you will still have to deal with the negative effects that constantly appear during the fight. Already now, many say that you need to have at least a tenfold level advantage to defeat a demon. If it weren't for the class quest, it would still be scary because the enemy is much more powerful. However, Darren was serious without a drop of fear in his eyes, he declared that he would punish them. Max, although he knew that he would say this, still trembled at what was to come. The next day, Max began looking for information about the Count, and it turned out that he was in Russia. He decided that first he would need to go to the Magic Tower, since it had a portal that could take him anywhere. While the brunette was deciding what would be the most convenient and fastest way to get to the tower, Darren had already gotten dressed and was heading towards the exit to arrive at his destination as soon as possible. He took bags of his favorite tea, he never went outside without them, and he set off, ignoring Max's request to take a down jacket since it is very cold in Russia now. A large number of reporters and journalists had already gathered at the Magic Tower. Everyone was running around in confusion, waiting for the famous guild Gaon. They guessed that they would come to the tower for teleportation, since it was more convenient and logical than flying on an airplane. Of course, after a while, everyone's favorites appeared, the long-awaited guild Gown. The guild was immediately swarmed by reporters and bombarded with questions. Adrian decided to answer the most important question honestly, saying that he did not know how to defeat Count Joshua. He stunned the journalists with his answer, and continued by saying that they came here before their competitors in order to get ahead of them and that they were not going to share information. Suddenly, members of the Shining Guild appear on the square, and all the reporters are already running towards them. All the big guilds rush to Korea because of the Magic Tower. The brothers decided to ignore the Vitriolic Guild and began to support each other. Adrian asked about Max, but due to the update, Greg hadn't had time to contact him again yet. Meanwhile, Darren was riding the bus to the tower. This time, he was watching a video about fire magic, already the hundredth one. It was now clear to him that magic was activated in three stages, exploring the mana, interfering with it, and manifesting it. As soon as the bus driver saw that the guy was doing magic, he immediately asked him to stop, because it was dangerous. 
The young man didn't think it would work, but he still stopped the flames. After that, Darren wanted to check what magical skills had been added, but they did not appear. After some time, he reached the right place. The main hall of the Magic Tower was amazing and very crowded. The young man approached one of the portals and felt a strange feeling, as if he could understand portal magic. It even seemed to him that it was simpler than the fire magic he uses. Suddenly, some big guy from Gaon passes by and accidentally pushes the guy into the portal. The big blockhead was confused, and Adrian started yelling at him. The enraged head of Gaon wanted to fire him. But Greg noticed that the young man who was pushed looked like Max. A few minutes later, Greg began the briefing, showing a diagram of a rift in Russia, where the outer circle, the outskirts of the Count's family's territory, has hundreds of different entrances. The inner circle is the territory of the Count's family of about 30, and the central one is the fortress of the Count's family, the abode of the Count. Based on the analysis of current and past faults, if a breakthrough occurs, the Count's fortress will most likely appear in the real world. At the same time, in Russia, many reporters, streamers, and players had already gathered near the rift. Darren's portal was moved to one of the streamers. The young man began to be indignant that he was the first to find the rift. But the blonde didn't care and, in his style, asked the guy to calm down. He approached the rift of the Count family territory outskirts, which had a destruction rate of 9.7% and a suitable level for passing 240 to 70. In the rift, the red-haired girl, the head of the Berserker Guild, was already actively fighting with her opponents. Her comrades, who were an order of magnitude lower in level, could barely keep up with her. Her name is Lara, her level is 348, and she is in the top 100 players. Just at this time, Darren entered the outskirts of the territory. Poor Max was shivering from the cold, but the blonde didn't care. He was already ready to fight. A moment later, a pack of level 230 blood wolves began to approach him. Although he was only level 67, he was confident of his victory, so he took out his blade to attack. And in another place, another guild, desperately fighting the monsters, assessed the situation. Lara still couldn't calm down and furiously finished off her opponents. Her team, Already accustomed to the leader's disposition, calmly watched the performance. Red noticed that these wolves did not feel fear in battle, and perhaps did not even know about it. Gathering together, the team heard someone's frightened howl nearby. The leader quickly rushed towards the sound, and the others hurried after her. When Darren aimed his bow, he felt mana in the arrowhead. Although the arrow is not the best, he tried to explore the mana, interfere with it, and manifest it, thanks to which it already flew all in fire. Lara, who had just arrived, was amazed by what she saw. The blonde sat calmly surrounded by corpses and fire and drank tea. The team also didn't understand what this magical skill was and what was happening. They decided that since he was acting so strangely, he was most likely a civilian who had simply gotten lost. However, he did not react to the guild leader's appeal to him, which offended the girl. Suddenly, Lara's comrades called out to her, warning her of danger. It turned out that they were being attacked again by zombie-like enemies. The players immediately realized that there were too many monsters and they couldn't handle them. This did not stop the frisky girl, and she rushed towards the creatures fully armed. Unfortunately, enemies also appeared at the top, but this time with bows and arrows. The confused guild didn't know what to do, being surrounded by so many enemies. Turning around, Lara saw that the blonde man with a cup of tea was still there and was not going to go anywhere, and an endless number of arrows were already flying at them. Darren was busy with his own affairs, studying magic. This time, he practiced with the thermos, as always going through three stages with mana. However, this time he had a special idea for the manifestation of mana. He thought about what would happen if the spell wasn't a skill and transformed the glass. The bright flash forced Lara to duck and close her eyes. And when she opened it, she saw that a huge wall had appeared in front of the team. A pleased Darren was finally able to use real magic. Everyone was amazed by such abilities, but no one understood who Darren was. However, a moment later, everyone felt the impending massacre. On the other hand, a horde of undead was already rushing towards them. The newly minted magician had to put aside his tea and take up the bow. One of the fighters was wounded and his comrade was looking for a healer. An enemy was chasing him and he knew he couldn't dodge, but in an instant, an arrow pierced the monster and saved the player. Darren had no plans to stop. He set the fire again and launched the fire arrow. Lara was at a loss because in front of her was a character who possessed magic and also had a bow, and looked like an alchemist. After some time, all the enemies were successfully defeated. The chief was informed that there was no one else in the area, but the girl's thoughts were occupied with something else. She looked at Darren, who walked into the rift alone in a light suit and ignored her questions. 
The girl was so absorbed in looking that she didn't notice how he was looking back at her. Quickly turning away, she pretended as if nothing had happened. The blonde approached her anyway and sternly said that there was no extra tea for her. On the other side of the fault, a correspondent from Arkansagodnia was broadcasting live. He told the audience that this fault, one of three, is called the outskirts of the territories. There are hundreds of such rifts, and until they are all cleared, players will not pass the next level. There are many guilds currently engaged in the cleanup, but which one will be the first? The guild that clears the rift faster than the others will definitely gain worldwide fame. One of the assistants came into the director's tent, offering him some warming coffee. The assistant said that all guilds are about halfway through, but the Shining Ones are doing the fastest. The director said that in that case they should prepare near their fault to take an interview. Suddenly, an assistant rushed past the presenters as he and the director noticed something on the cameras. The director ordered the entire film crew to run after his assistant, as one of the faults had been cleared. When the young man ran to the place, he was surprised. After all, the first were the Berserk Guild, which no one expected. In the bushes, the assistant saw a Korean in a suit, which confused him, because the guild was European. Finally, the entire film crew came running to capture the first guild. The assistant decided to try to interview an unusual Korean man standing near the fault. However, Darren was not in the mood for such a conversation and asked the young man to step aside. And other reporters have already pounced on Berserk with questions. But the chief was furious, since it was that blonde guy who cleared the rift. When she was told that the young man had already left, this lady began to get even more furious because she wanted to give the interview to him, because being the first to clean up is a great honor. Suddenly, a second rift nearby lit up blue, and the Gaon Guild emerged from there. All the journalists immediately switched to the second in line and bombarded them with questions. Lara couldn't help but say something that no one expected to hear. Everyone immediately turned around and was very surprised by this. After the cleanup, the Gaon Guild was resting in their camp. The news reported Lara's words, where she said that Gaon is not the only strong guild in Korea. Adrian and Greg themselves couldn't believe what she said about them. Greg suggested that Berserk might have met someone strong from Korea who helped them cope faster. Adrian was incredibly angry because he didn't understand who could help them so much. Meanwhile, Darren was taking a hot, relaxing shower. Max was delighted because recently he almost died from the cold. After a shower and such a hard day, Max wanted to lie down and rest. But Darren had other plans. He again felt the urge to clean up the dust since a lot of it had settled during their absence. Afterwards, as always, he prepared delicious food and arranged a tea party. At this time, Max decided to check the inventory replenishment, but did not find anything interesting. Although the level is now 86, the increase is small for such a difficult task. Demon hunters are a class with benefits that don't involve skills, especially since Darren can now control magic, which takes less mana than skills. But Darren understood that he was still weak, he could not accept that if someone underestimated him, then he would prove the opposite. If he is overestimated, he becomes better and makes the overestimate a reality. The blonde decided for himself that he could not rely on magic alone, and he needed combat skills. He took Lara as an example, whom he followed during the fight because her movements attracted attention. So he set a goal to do a lot of exercises for the quest at night. He quickly finished his chores and washed the dishes. Instead of sleeping, he went for a run with the radio in his headphones. Suddenly, urgent news was announced about the clearing of 95% of the outskirts of the Count's family's territories. Although the next one should open after this, but according to information it has already reached 60% destruction, at this rate it may soon be broken through. The Gaon Guild was also in front of the TV screen when the news was announced. The time for clearing has decreased most likely due to the presence of strong monsters there. And in the Camp Arcana today, there was chaos. No one understood the reason for such a rapid increase in the monster's strength. Everyone was confused because many lives depended on this rift. Darren looked at his phone to find out more about the news, but it also said one thing. This had never happened before, so he understood why they were so confused. Vampires are creatures that share power through blood. The Count divided the power between the monsters, and after their death it began to return to him. He began to pour the returned power into the monsters of the Count's family territory, so they became stronger and the progress of destruction accelerated. In this case, if a raid begins on the Count's territory, there is a chance that the Rift Fortress will immediately collapse. Darren did not like the Count's behavior, so he intended to kill him, since he had tarnished the honor of the nobles. Even though Max supported him, the poor guy still really wanted to sleep. But it was already late, because the blonde was heading somewhere again. Meanwhile, before the break of the Count's family territories, 
a young guy started his stream. He said that the degree of destruction of the rift was already 70%, and there were less than five hours left until the breakthrough, but many guilds had already gathered here. He went on to say that, unlike the outskirts, where there were more than 200 faults, there were only 30 in the area, and since there are fewer of them, several guilds will claim one rift, but experience and loot are distributed depending on the contribution of each. His very interesting stream was interrupted by Greg, who happened to pass behind him, which caught his attention. Greg met with his guild and shared that they still couldn't avoid competition in any case. While the streamer hid nearby, Adrian discussed with his brother which guilds had already united for battle. Suddenly, the sounds of the guild approaching interrupted their conversation. It was the fourth rank in Azuma Guild, led by Leo. There was an immediate sense of unease between Adrian and Leo. They started making jokes and teasing each other. Journalists immediately rushed in, having sniffed out that two of the strongest but warring guilds would be heading into this rift. Greg was bombarded with shouts about the difference in ratings, that their guild was lower. But the brothers were determined. Since they had arrived first, it was not time to leave. At this time, the news was already flying about two long warring guilds entering the same rift. The northern rifts were left behind in first and second place, shining and united skies. In the southern rift, Berserker, Second Sun, and Boheem are observed. At present, the level of destruction has reached 80% which causes fear among people all over the world. Darren, in turn, was already drinking tea on the territory of the Count's family. In the last rift, he already realized that he could be left without mana, and this is dangerous, so he is looking for an opportunity to use it more effectively. Magic based on alchemist skills allows objects to be given any shape. He used stones from which he made a cup and a table, but the more parts, the more mana is consumed. At this time, the Count's level 300 soldiers were already heading towards him. This time, he decided to use a new technique with less mana consumption, which returns to the original state and thus defeated the enemies. And somewhere in the depths of the Count's territories, the Gown desperately defeated all opponents. But Adrian was confused by the small number of enemies. After a while, a girl came running to him with news. It turned out that she had followed Inazuma and that they were in the same situation. Suddenly, Leo and his team approached the guild, saying that it was very peaceful here. Both heads grappled again, ready to destroy each other on the spot. They were interrupted by Greg, who asked over the earpiece about the group's location. When the head said that the place looked like a square, his earpiece started to burst with screams for the guild to leave there immediately. And it was not in vain, because a moment later, level 350 knights arrived. Adrian immediately assumed a fighting stance and ordered everyone to prepare for battle. Leo turned to him, telling him to cover his back, even though neither of them liked it. But they had to do it. After a while, it became clear that the enemies were everywhere. They were surrounded. Just when everyone thought the situation was hopeless, a blue magical flame appeared. The magical power instantly swept away all high-level enemies. Both guilds did not expect such an outcome of events and were in a stupor from what happened. A huge wall appeared in front of them, and Darren came up from behind. Meanwhile, the cute streamer, who had gone to the toilet, rejoined the broadcast of the ruins. Only 12 people watched it, but he was determined. Suddenly he saw a bright flash behind him and ran towards the light. But the heroes stood in horror all this time because the entire field was covered in stone pillars. Leo had more and more questions about this guy's origins. He didn't understand what guild he belonged to, but his thoughts were dispelled by the enemies who broke through the stone pillars. Adrian was filled with a desire to destroy the cavalry, especially since their movements were now hampered. He began to smash the knights with his strong and precise blows, but the Inazuma guild did not lag behind, grinding everyone into dust. The streamer arrived in the midst of the battle and was, to put it mildly, shocked. His stream was gaining momentum. Everyone wanted to know who this mysterious, all-powerful man was. Darren continued his epic attacks with magic, dealing with the entire cavalry single-handedly, after which he took the silver dagger, but its durability was too low. So he decided to try to interact with the dagger's mana to change its form and then restore it to its original state. When he turned the stone into a cup, the cup would gain a durability value. And when he restored it to its original state, it would return to its stone form with no durability value. And if restoration means complete restoration to its original form, then a lot of possibilities open up. And after he tried this technique on the last enemy kill and the durability remained the same, he realized that it works great. Adrian gave the order to collect the drop and praised everyone for the work done. Now Adrian was serious and really wanted to get Max into his guild, especially since Leo had also seen him in action and could intercept him for himself. 
Suddenly, a streamer runs up to the blonde, disturbing his tea drinking. But Max was of interest not only to him, so all the participants of the battle immediately ran up to him with questions. Adrian also approached him to shake his hand and talk, but the young man coldly asked him to get out of his way. The next day, all the news feeds were filled with photos of Darren, the young man who refused to answer questions. Now the Shining Guild has already studied information about him. The head of this guild, Louis, the second in the player rankings, was very interested in the new character. However, his comrades, neither Meg nor Duke, knew anything about the player. The girl said that the boss doesn't have to worry about this guy because Louis can easily get him for himself. Duke was a little upset that the news was currently all about this guy, not the fact that they were the first to clear the area. After this conversation, the guys left the leader alone and went about their business. Suddenly, a young sorceress approached him, who was also interested in the news. It was Jessica, fourth in the ranking with a level of 397. She found the magic the blonde man used in battle interesting. At the same time, the Berserk Guild was also watching the news. The easily excitable Lara began to hit her comrades, saying that she had said that the guy was unusual. The girl was clearly very worried about this meeting. Leo, the head of the Inazuma Guild, wasted no time and was already calling with orders to recruit that guy to his side. The broadcast of Arcana Today began, which reported on the successful cleansing of the Count's family's territories. In the territory, the guilds Sianye and Union clashed in the fight for the first cleanup, but Siani won without major losses. At the moment, only the Rift Count's family fortress remains. The destruction progress is currently 72%, and players from all over the world are preparing to enter it in anticipation of an increase in numbers. Given how high the stakes are, tensions are at an all-time high in the players' temporary camps. If the rift breaks, in the current situation, when Russia is practically doomed, one can only wish good luck to the players. Darren and Max have been watching the news since early morning and at some point they started broadcasting about an unknown guy, without a single magical item, who was very strong. In fact, Darren couldn't wear them because he simply didn't have them. The news continued to praise the young hero, who was excellent at selecting attacks for his opponent and knew his weaknesses. Then they filmed Darren standing and calmly watching the fighting guilds, because he had already done so much. In fact, Darren had run out of mana, but fortunately no one knew about it, so Max decided to check his inventory. It turned out that he had received a rare item that you can only touch as a player, a necklace imbued with a blood curse. The so-called demon items are cursed items that can be removed from a curse, and then random effects will appear with a certain probability. But there is another option for how to use a cursed object, a sacrifice for an exorcism rite. Although the main purpose of this ritual is to kill the demon without harming the person, with the sacrifice, everything will be different, he will be able to literally invite the demon into his consciousness. This is similar to how demons put a person into an abnormal state. There is a risk of becoming possessed if spiritual powers are low, but if he manages to fight in his inner world, then he will have advantages. In the midst of active reasoning, Greg suddenly called. Max immediately thought that it was because Darren ignored the head of Gaon on the air. So he decided to write to him politely asking him not to blame him. Greg received a message with the single word problematic, which again caused misunderstanding among the brothers. The analyst began to reassure that the rift had not yet been cleared, and Adrian said he just wanted to apologize for being rude and offer better terms. The brothers only now saw how the blonde was trembling. It seemed to them that he was holding back a lot. Suddenly everything around the boys started shaking. The Count's family fortress rift suddenly broke through at 80% resolution progress for an unknown reason. Russian authorities recommend all non-players to evacuate immediately. The death toll has exceeded 200 Adrian and Greg immediately went outside and saw something terrible. Before them appeared the enormous fortress of Count Joshua. Just then Darren arrived at the scene. Everyone immediately started talking about the blonde guy they saw on the news. And the determined Darren calmly walked straight into the fortress all alone. He approached the statue which seemed to him extremely disgusting and began to criticize the fortress. The young man compared it to his huge mansion, realizing that this lousy vampire wasn't even worthy of his own. At that moment, the terrible statue came to life and looked at the player with hostility. The statue began to attack the calmly standing hero, while the others watched what was happening. With just one movement of his fingers, he instantly turned the enemy into boulders. The sounds of battle attracted the attention of the Shining Guild, which was nearby. Although the team had no plans to enter, Jessica decided to head into the fortress after hearing the familiar sounds of magic. Darren got away with it because the statue was just a stone, and he had just had a little practice on the stones, which was enough. 
As soon as the enemy was destroyed, all the guilds instantly began to run inside the fortress. Darren realized that by killing the gatekeeper, he had launched a signal flare for the others. The young man did not wait any longer and went to the citadel. When he entered the banquet hall and passed by the portraits of the Count, he felt something disgusting. At the same time, the gown guild enters the fortress, and for some reason the heroes feel weak. Ever since they entered the hallway with the paintings, Adrian feels like he's being stared at all the time. It is after these words that Greg orders all the paintings to be burned, as they have a negative effect. Greg wondered why most of the players who entered first retreated. It turned out there was a trap in the castle. Statues, portraits, and interiors all evoke a status anomaly. Meanwhile, Darren walked through the hall with paintings. He was haunted by the disgustingly poorly drawn portraits. He didn't understand why there were so many useless portraits here. He felt sorry for the rock that had been broken for the sake of the unbearable statues. The fortress structures and passages are also damaged. Paths diverge unnecessarily and even block corridors. All this terribly tormented the aristocratic personality of the young man. However, at that moment a huge staircase leading up appeared before them. Darren smelled a foul odor and knew this was the place he was looking for. Suddenly, the sorceress Jessica appears before his face, having finally found him. She began to express admiration for his magic and skills, as well as his mana, while blocking his path. In an instant, the young man stopped the flow of her heated speeches, reminding her of etiquette. At that moment, Count Joshua appeared in the doorway at the top of the stairs. In an ominous voice, he asked who dared to wake him up and notice his two people. The sorceress instantly felt an unimaginable sense of pressure, and Darren addressed the vampire in an insulting format and took out the necklaces for sacrifice. He prepared to teach him a lesson so that he would no longer dare to call himself an aristocrat. He plans to begin the exorcism ritual with an offering so he can summon Joshua into his consciousness and defeat him. The count is level 430, so there is a high chance that he will become possessed. The vampire majestically said that the young man would not succeed. The demon began to take back the power he had shared with his followers. The difference between them is already over 300, but if he absorbs all the power he gave, the gap will become even greater. Suddenly, Count Joshua finds himself in a strange, dark place and freezes in surprise. But as soon as he saw the man, he released his claws. The monster began to cast a spell to destroy the pathetic worm. However, when he attacked him with fire, he thought that Darren had turned into a pile of ash. But calling out to him in another place, the young man showed that he was more alive than all the living and hinted that only the Count had died there. And after these words, blood gushed from the demon's mouth, his eyes rolled back. Waking up from the illusion, the Count was in a panic and did not understand what was happening because he was still on the stairs. With his magic, the blonde even blew off the roof of the fortress. Jessica couldn't help but admire Darren's skills. And now the time has come and the guy used his skill of exorcism right. The demon received an invitation to the demon hunter ritual. He has no chance of shaking Darren's mind. The Count, in the process, screams, looking into space, attacks where there is no one, or tries to run away in horror. Through the ritual, the hunter instilled fear similar to that which demons instill in people. Jessica was amazed by the young man's technique, and in the meantime they went up to the vampire to finish the ritual. It turned out that the Count had suffered no damage at all. He was only overcome with horror. The blonde turned to the magician and commanded her to kill the demon, which surprised the girl. Of course, he wanted to finish him off himself, but because his level was too low, it was impossible. But he didn't tell her this, but only coldly ordered her to finish him off. The girl quickly cast a spell and a magical beam fell from the sky onto Joshua. Max was amazed by such strong magic, and Darren expressed slight surprise. As a result, their enemy turned into a handful of ashes. No matter how weakened he was, only a top player could kill a level 430 count with one blow. The young lady decided to taste her enemy which greatly embarrassed the neat aristocrat. Without wasting any time, the guy wanted to see the changes in the tasks. However, his reading was interrupted by a crowd of guilds who were heading towards them with questions. When asked who killed the Count, the players only looked at each other. Suddenly, the girl says that she will try her best to learn etiquette and introduces herself to the hunter. He sees that in front of him is a proud man who swears that he will change. So in response, he says that his name is Maxim. The next day, in one apartment, the mother was cooking food and her daughter was watching the news. However, something caught her childish gaze and she rushed to her mother to share it. When they stood together in front of the TV, they saw that the news was talking about the already famous hero Max. Mother. Meanwhile, the blonde man, as usual, was thoroughly cleaning the apartment. His routine was interrupted by numerous calls from his sisters. 
Max had three older sisters with whom he was very close since childhood. More precisely, they were among themselves, and one could say they were bullying him. After ignoring the calls, the sisters decided to come to the young man's home and were already knocking and breaking down the door. When the brother opened the door, what stood before him was the youngest, Jody, the middle one, Judy, and the eldest, Gina. And in her arms was her little daughter, Izzy. Dressed in a suit, with blonde hair and perfect manners, he met the sisters and invited them into the apartment. The girls, slightly shocked by Max's new look, were speechless. At home, at this time, Greg was lying on the sofa, exhausted by the news, listening again and again about the new hero with amazing abilities. Caring Adrian brought Coco for his brother to somehow support him. The guy was worried that with such fame, Max might not agree to join their guild. The brother reminded them that they had an advantage, his phone number, and they could call him with an official request for a gift of the trophies that they received thanks to Max. And to make sure he pays attention to them, the head is ready to go for broke and give away all the trophies. At this time, Izzy performed some kind of art on Darren's head. A kind older sister, Gina was touched by her brother's new hair color. Middle sister Judy couldn't stop laughing because the blonde guy now looked like an idol, and the youngest of the sisters, Jody, only watched in horror at the strange changes. Max was the youngest of them and was never deprived of attention. He said that he became a player, and that is why he became like this, because he assimilated with the character. Judy approached him with a question about the danger of his choice. The sisters expressed their concern about the frequent injuries that players suffered. However, he clearly and without hesitation said that being a demon hunter was his calling and there was nothing to worry about. It was already towards evening when the sisters got ready to leave and said goodbye to Darren. Each of the sisters gave their advice, and Jody recommended saving money, after which they left. And then Max remembered that they were supposed to receive a reward for clearing the rift. The main source of income for players, paid by the Arcana developers depending on the level of the rift and the contribution to the cleanup. In fact, there are rumors that the developer of Cosmo has gone bankrupt, and the CEO is paying out of his own pocket. Max always wondered how much they paid for such tasks. A million or a billion won. Meanwhile, in the Shining Guild, Meg kept trying to get information about Max from Jessica. The sorceress could not stand it and asked her annoying friend to move away. Meg had no choice but to leave Jessica, who was busy with something. And the magician, by the way, was just watching etiquette lessons, as she promised. At this time, Max couldn't believe his eyes, because 110 billion won had arrived in the account. The young man could not even dream of such a sum, but the aristocrat found this paltry sum unworthy. Also added to the inventory is the Vampire Count's Orb, a unique item. It is a cursed item that is usually thrown away due to the low chance of removing the curse. But demon hunters can use it as a sacrifice for exorcism. The Blood Curse Necklace was chosen by Darren as a sacrifice during the fight with the Count. However, this item remained in the inventory and even the curse was lifted. Surely the exorcism cleared the curse. It turns out that the Sphere Necklace and 110 billion are now in Max's possession. He couldn't sleep all night. He was tormented by thoughts about where to put so much money. If he buys the items, that would be right. But on the other hand, it would be a waste of time to find the right equipment for the current level. After defeating Joshua, his level went up to 134. Just a few days ago, he was 55. So there is no point in buying expensive items for his level. The next day, a conference was held at the OAA headquarters to discuss Darren's attacks. No one understood what the young man was using because it was impossible for alchemy, since it had a limit on mana. Many argued, but one couple of colleagues were already tired of discussing Darren, who was constantly appearing on the air. They were concerned about the fact that there was no such player in the Arcana database. Suddenly, their attention was drawn to a notification about an update. The update added Yuzra Island, a mysterious area that was referred to as Treasure Island, when Arcana was a game. Although no one has ever found this region, it is an island of fantasy where everything that was born and raised there was incomparably above the level of treasures. The news has already reported that the regular Conference of Magicians will resume this week, simultaneously with the renewal of the Yusra Treasure Island. The Periodic Society of Mages, where experienced mages gather for discussion, has been of great help in improving the skills of the mages class. One of the only invited players, fourth place finisher, Jessica enters the tower and is immediately bombarded with questions. Max was taken aback when he learned that Darren had taught manners to a person with a rating of four. Max mentioned that there was a good chance that a regular conference could help him. Darren took this into account and decided to wash the dishes first and then head to the tower. At this time, many people had already gathered at the Tower of Magicians. Inside, 
In the Great Hall, Claire sat and watched the many people who had come. She was glad that the conferences had resumed. While the girl was thinking about the conference, players were frolicking nearby. One of them fell awkwardly and could have fallen right on her, but the mage was behind a hidden barrier, so the young man hit the wall, as it seemed to him. Suddenly, a sorceress passed through the magical barrier. It was Jessica, who came here by invitation because only the invited one can see this magic. Today, Claire was the guide who escorted the adventurers into the Crystal Hall. It turned out that the magician was the last of those invited, so the guide wanted to leave with her. But the sorceress asked her to stay, as she felt that someone else would come. Just at this time, Darren entered the tower. For some reason, every time he comes here, a huge crowd gathers around. However, the guy could not remain unnoticed, and he found himself in the center of attention. They surrounded him from all sides. He looked for where he could hide. And I saw that one wall felt different, so I decided to go straight into it. Indeed, his feelings did not fail him, and he walked through and came across Claire. The girl led the blonde to the conference, but there were many things that confused her along the way. She tried to find him on the guest list, but he was nowhere to be found. The girl sincerely did not understand how he was able to see the illusion, because it was set up by the Lord of the Tower himself, and no one can see it without an invitation. She explained that there was a rule that even without an invitation to the conference, anyone who could see through the illusion could enter. It's just that this is the first time she's encountered a player who saw through the illusion without an invitation. Hallucination magic that could actually be dispelled, if his spell power was equal to a thousand, he could very well use something like that. Finally, they came to a spacious hall with crystals, where many invited players were sitting. When the Arcana became a reality, the Arcanians, NPCs inside the game, also appeared in reality, as well as the most important of them. The successor of the Magic Tower called the youngest chief magician, Nicholas. The hat on the head of the sorceress Jessica continued the incredible story about the magician, but the girl was bored. Unfortunately, the sorceress was not at all interested in the story and she wanted to sleep. Nicholas spoke to all the guests about magic. He told about the appearance of a magic tower in the world of travelers. At this point, even the sorceress Jessica became interested. It turned out that he was leading to the fact that he saw the possibility of further development of magic and science. Fusion is a new type of fire that was created through magic and science. However, one must be careful when using merge, because no one knows what the variables will be when two completely different concepts are merged. That's why Nicholas needs the help of those invited for this quest. Max approached the magician with a question, stating that there was a disorder in his research. Everyone immediately started talking about how the young man shouldn't have asked such a provocative question. Such directness and harshness irritated Nicholas a little, but he wanted to know why he thought so. Then, Darren replied that magic and science were very different concepts because there was a difference in the process of merging it, so it was a mess. Previously, the blonde also experienced such a difference due to the difference between skill and magic. Nicholas was amazed that it had taken him months to create such magic, but the traveler did it so easily and experienced the same difference. And the young man continued to talk about the fact that the use of centrifugal force in the process of intervention, although the process is not complete, the results are not bad. Nicholas expressed respect for Darren and invited him to join his research. As expected, the hunter was glad he came to the conference. At this time on the paradise island of Treasures Yusra, the Berserker Guild was already in full force and preparing for adventure. However, they are not alone. Many guilds and streamers have already found a place for themselves on the island. Even the Lionheart Knights, a group of shadow mercenaries, and a federation of explorers arrived. This is not surprising, because this island is famous for its treasures. So many people were hooked. Suddenly, Lara receives a call on her watch from a familiar magician, who says that Max himself was at the conference. He also said that the chief magician was in disarray and proved it, which earned his respect, and he gave him a quest. Meanwhile, Darren studied the writings in the hotel room with Nicholas. The chief magician directly said that he would get any items for his research that Maxim would need. With these words, he untied the young man's hands and he began to write down many expensive items he needed. After some time, on the very top floor, the five-star magicians called Nicholas to them. One of them began to talk about how he had learned that he had offered to conduct a joint research with one of the travelers. He was reminded that the magic tower does not interfere in the affairs of travelers. The chief magician broke the rules of the tower. In his defense, Nicholas said that Max definitely understood the concept of magic, and it seemed like he had also overcome the magic gap. The five-star mage continued that mages judge themselves and take responsibility for themselves, so Nicholas should be held accountable for his decision. After this conversation, he was ordered to leave the room. Leaving them, 
He lamented that old idiots were obsessed only with their ideals and closed their eyes to reality. His train of thought was interrupted by Claire, who was just heading to Max to hand over the requested items. Nicholas asked to give him these items right away, since he was planning to visit Max anyway. At this time, the blonde was still sitting waiting for the items, studying various books. And after some time, the chief magician came to him and laid out the requested things on the table. In front of him were unique magical instruments with amazing characteristics, but with a required level of 550. In a cold and irritated tone, Darren asked a clarifying question. Did all these items really fit under his level 134? Nicholas understood him and offered him an item related to the regeneration of magical powers. It was a six-star brooch, one of six that restores 10% of expended magic power. Nicholas was impressed by the young man's knowledge of magical objects and thanked him again for his cooperation. Max was confused by the size of this object. He could not believe that it was so magnificent. Suddenly, the magician stated that at the moment they could not conduct the research, as there was a disorder in it. The quest has been changed to waiting for contact with Nicholas. Nicholas believed that with this traveler he could change the magic tower. And on the island, the same streamer who first filmed Max in battle began his broadcast. The guy started talking about the situation around him. But, unfortunately, Maxime was nowhere to be found. The young man asked the impatient spectators to wait. And in the meantime, some player approached him. It turned out to be Baxter from Supernova, who was already tired of everyone talking only about Max. Those who regained fame after the Arcana became a reality. Accidents always continued around them, who did not use any means for their own ends, especially Baxter, who was rumored to be especially evil among the suspects. The player who entered the rift with his group went missing and is rumored to have died. For some reason he was interested in Max and asked me to tell him not to act too frivolously. After this, the player left the streamer, and a debate broke out in the comments about whether Max would come. The streamer immediately blocked the guy who wrote that he wouldn't come because he was scared. At this time, Darren was debating whether he should go to the island. But there was no point in it, nor any reason to go. Yusra Island is very tempting with treasures, but the required level to get there is 350. Moreover, there are no demons in this place, but the monsters there are around 400 levels. At this rate, he would be killed as soon as he set foot on these lands. If there was even one demon there, the young man would have tried. Suddenly, a notification appeared about a new class quest, in which, in addition to body training, a task appeared to investigate the great evil on the island of Yusra. The great evil is the seven deadly sins, pride, envy, anger, gluttony, lust, sloth, and greed. Max thought that since he had defeated the Count, it might not be a problem to investigate the great evil that is the seven deadly sins. Darren said that if there was no reason to go before, there was no reason to hesitate now. So after a while, the blonde was on a hot island in his formal suit. The young man immediately felt a very strong influence on the entire island, as well as the feeling that the island itself was this evil. In this case, the connection with the natural enemy will be activated all the time, so you shouldn't lie under the enemy's feet. And behind Darren, the sticky streamer was following again. Although the young man entered boldly, he is now looking for an easy mob with whom he can fight most effectively. The young streamer warned all viewers that the broadcast would continue as long as he did not interfere with Mr. Max. Suddenly, a player ran out of the bushes, fiercely fighting someone right in front of the streamer. It turned out that in front of them was a huge emerald tiger of level 420, all sparkling, which made it impossible to aim. Darren stood behind the player to attack the enemy. Of course, Max didn't expect that the first monster would be the highest level mob on the island. He only has a 10 level difference with Count Joshua. He probably won't be able to escape, and his body shining in the sun obscures his view. However, if you immobilize him, it will no longer work. Darren decided to try using fire magic. Thanks to this AAKA, the young man's level increased and his contribution in the battle with the Emerald Tiger was recognized. The players standing nearby couldn't believe that the Emerald Tiger had just been killed with one blow. Elsewhere on the island was the guild and the leader of the Second Sun Guild, Pierce. His comrades suggested joining the detachment that had separated. According to rumors, the Shining Ones headed almost to the center of the island altogether, and their squad cannot avoid fighting the monsters. It might have been a mistake to split into groups, so now the guild will have to be reunited, since the leader realized that he had made a mistake in strategy. Suddenly a call came from the second part of the detachment. They said their route was clear, so they would join the main group at their side. His friend said that this route was cleared by Max. Another member ran up to the master with a call from a guild member who was attending a regular conference at the Magic Tower. 
He revealed that Max received a quest from Nicholas and became the first player to receive a private laboratory at the top of the Magic Tower. At this moment, a happy Max was looking at the pure emerald crystal he had received. This rating item was unique, which made him very happy, but Darren tried to ignore the uncultured joy. While his eye was rejoicing, the blonde felt the air around him change. Suddenly, a window with a class quest opened. A notification appeared that the island of Yusra is beginning to be covered in greed. The process of breaking has begun. Each of the players received such notifications. Everyone was shocked to learn that the island was a rift. From the notification window, it should be a greed demon. Any demon hunter in Akshan would know. Darren knew that if this continued, a great evil would awaken. Suddenly, one of the teams started to behave strangely. They all rushed together to search for treasure, since the Shining Ones had already broken one island and, according to rumors, received a reward. At this time, all the players on Yusra Island think the same way as they do. Although in order for the treasure not to be tainted by greed, everyone must give up their desire to have it. It will be impossible to convince all the players. A brilliant idea came to Darren's mind and he decided to collect all the treasures himself to prevent a catastrophe. On the second island of Yusra, the Shining Guild also received notifications. The guys guessed that the rupture process has 10 levels, like the 10 islands of Yusra, and one of them simply caught fire. The interesting thing is that it filled up as soon as they got the treasure, so it's like a bill. 